Northern groups have introduced Operation Shege Kafasa as the new proposed security outfit that will protect the northern zone from kidnapping and banditry. And the Christian Association of Nigeria, CAN, and the Nigerian Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs, the NSCIA, clash over President Buhari's statement over the major religion of victims of Boko Haram. This is Plus Politics, and I am Benny Ark. The coalition of northern groups has unveiled Operation Sheikh Kafasa, the security outfit that would tackle kidnapping and banditry in the zone. The group has said the outfit, whose name means I Dare You, will be formally inaugurated in the coming weeks after all necessary legal processes have been formally adopted and ratified by the northern state governors. Its symbols are very similar to that of the southwest Amotekun. Joining me this evening to discuss this is Obede Yi, Olari Waju, a political analyst. Thank you for joining us this evening. Thank you very much for having Interesting. me. Interesting. Um, at the break of this news, what was your first reaction? Um, the security uh, of any country, of any state, of a, any paraphernalia should not be left in the hands of just the government. Mm. It's... Um, it's it's an everybody uh, thing, just like Amor Tekum was battered in the Southwest. I have nothing against uh, Shege Kafasa, you know, I mean, it's, I want to believe it's a good one. It's a call on the federal government since uh, the federal government had always been uh, the one saddled with the responsibility of ensuring uh, security in the country. But unfortunately, uh, in recent times, we all know that the security uh, state of the country had been something to really worry about. So if each um, section, individuals, persons are coming up with um, plans to beef up security apparatus. I don't think there's anything to worry about in that. Now, the, the, Northern, um, the coalition of Northern groups uh, will be launching our security outfit, Shege Kafasa. I mean, what, what's, what's similar, what similarity does this have with the Southwestern um, security outfit code name Operation Amotekun? Um, Operation Amotekun came into being due to the incessant um, security breaches yes. we've been experiencing. In the region. Yes, in the region. We've, um, we've had of kidnappings, we've had of um, others um, just uh, penetrating farmlands and um, nothing was really happening, I mean, from the federal as it were. So uh, the governors of the Southwest came together and decided, okay, it's high time we take our security in our hands, especially after the death of um, the daughter of um, the elder statesman of yes, the um, Yoruba, that's elder Fasoroti, right? Odua people. Uh, exactly, you know? So um, it's, it's a good one that the northern part had also decided uh, to, to follow the same line of creating their own security outfit. But my worry is, I hope this is not political, if it's for uh, security reasons, perfect yeah. i mean we we're a very big country in terms of population and size and we keep hearing that um we have maybe one police to about 300 persons in the country mm -hmm. so if uh each region decides to come up with um security uh extra security measures as long as it's within the confine of the constitution of the land. I think it's a good one. All right, there were a lot of controversies around uh, Operation Amotekun, and now we're having the um, Shege Kafasa. And now they are saying that um, in, in a few weeks' time from now, the, before the former inauguration, in the coming weeks, when all necessary legal processes might have been formally adopted and ratified by the northern state governors. Now, what does this, what does this mean? Because Amotekun couldn't go through because they say it was not an act of parliament. So would this, would this outfit come into existence and operation without also a, an act of par parliament which surrounded the con which was majorly the controversy around Operation Amotekun? I'd want to talk like a Nigerian. Okay. And um, with the consciousness that um, Nigeria actually has um, th three different regions. The south, the east, I mean the south, west, the east, and then the north. Yeah. So on that... Um, basis. I would say if the governors of each region, uh, after um, persistent um, 
security issues decide to form a coalition to come up with uh, a better security outfit there's nothing wrong with that um, before now Amotekun was being politicized and that's why i said if this is done just to secure lives and properties mm. of citizens i don't have any issue with it it's it's matter of fact i would say it's long overdue and um the the names you know in branding the names this outfit are, are getting actually speaks a lot amotekun in the yoruba parlance is uh, a kind of fierce animal that can hunt in the hair hunt underwater hunt on land you know the same thing this um shige kafasa is yeah. not saying you dare me just try and there we all know that um the security uh are, 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 the security situation in the country, it costs, it cuts along the length and breadth of the country. So uh, it's, it's very necessary that more should be done on security. It's, it's no gain there. All right. It's um, necessary. Let, let's put a little bit on Operation Amotekun because there were major concerns. Um, an erstwhile governor of, of Kaduna State, Moussa Balarabi, came out to say the federal government should not allow it to go through because he sees it as as a systematic orchestration to bring in um, the Odua's people's country, um, which sounded politically motivated. They, they felt there were elements of politics in it. And now, will it, be, will, it be, will it be wise to say, based on that, because it seems um, the outfit of Amotekun is here to stay, uh, could this be a reason why the, the coalition of Northern people are coming out together to create their own outfit? Like I said earlier on, I would want to talk like a Nigerian not a southwesterner or yes. a northern person uh the the words of balarabi was um a politician's word uh taken from the northern perspective i wouldn't want to take it that way uh, and that's why i would say okay if the southwest can have a motekun let the north also have um shige kafasa you know and um as long as it's not poli if as long as it's just Let's ensure the security. I mean, when you go to the north, it's not only the northerners that are killed. It's not only the uh, uh, I mean, it's not only the southerners and easterners that are killed. Yeah. The northerners are also a uh, victim of the killings. They are victim of the raids. They are victim of the uh, uh, lootings and all that. So, uh, um, if the state governor, I mean, the the, the regional governors of that part of the country, the side, okay, the, 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 the role of um, the leader of any section of any community is to ensure that everybody, because Amotekun is not just a Yoruba thing, Amotekun is, 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 um, is, is something battered to protect the Yoruba region. When you talk about the Yoruba region, the Yoruba region is having northerners living in it, it's having Southerners, it's having Easterners, it's having everybody from every part of the world. I mean, for, even from every part of the world now, we have Chinese, we have... The idea is for anybody within our territory, we want to ensure that you're secured, you're safe. Yes. So if the Northern counterpart of the Southern governors decide to say, okay, Larry, you're a Yoruba man, but if you're coming to the North tomorrow, we want to ensure you're safe. Okay. I think that's good. Well, there's a major concern about this same group because it was this same group in 2017 that gave an ultimatum for all non-Northerners to leave the North. We're going to come back to that. After this break, we have a cue for you to watch. Take a look. Today, I briefed them on the concept of community policy. If you can remember, last year we sensitized the whole country on the need to adapt community policing in the country. And the concept is to give policing back to the community, let the community take the initiative in uh, identifying the problems that are there that can lead to the commission of crime, and then we we'll work with the community to solve the crime. We believe that everybody comes from a community, and the community, in the community, you know who, who and who is there. So taking policing back to the community will help in reducing crime to the barest minimum. So I've explained the concept of community policing to the Senate, which involves partnership with communities, and there are various communities. 
you can have traditional uh, institutions as a community, you can have a national union of road transfer workers as community, you can have the media as a community, and various uh, forms of community that we need partnership with. The Senate thereafter resolved to support the Nigerian police through legislative interventions. The police force was further encouraged to be more proactive operationally to protect the lives and properties of our citizens. All right, there's a concern a few people have expressed because the, the coalition of Northern groups comprises of 36 groups in the region. And this is the same group um, sometime that gave the Igbo in the north uh, a three mode ultimatum to quit in October 2017. So concerns that uh, their operations, how will they be managed? I mean, given the fact it was the same group in 2017 that had asked Igbos to vacate the north and wouldn't this at the end of it be used as, as a political tool, wouldn't they serve as machinery in the hands of politicians who were just trying to um, fuel their own agenda in, in the north? Um, and this type of person that to, does not really want to put the cat before the horse. Um, Amotekun. But we need to was, consider that truth. Yes, we I mean, need to consider yes. it. Amotekun was well defined. Uh, Nigeria, we all want Nigeria. And um, I would always pray that Nigeria never disintegrates. But then, uh, if Nigeria is ever going to disintegrate, it's as a result of Nigerians' actions. You understand what I'm saying? And, um, well, on the surface, on the surface, this is introduced as a, uh, as a security outfit. It's not introduced as a political outfit. We have, um, of course, we have different groups, different pressure groups that would always come up and all that. Uh, and um, this is, like you rightly said, is not a project of the coalition of northerners. It's a project of a coalition of northern groups. governors. Yes. Governors, yes. Yes. not groups. Mm. Governors. That's the head of this state. Mm. Just the same way we have um, the governor of Lagos State or your state, irrespective of a political affiliation, political party all coming together to form a Motekun. I want to believe that's the same thing and uh, that the northern, their northern com counterparts are doing. I, I, I don't want to see this as, as a project of Arewa. I'm seeing it as a project of northern governors. So if it's a thing of northern governors, uh, if we would want... Yeah, but the Arewa Consultative Forum is, is an active member in, 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 in the CNG. Yes. I, I'm not disputing that. Yes. It's just like when we talk about uh, Amotekun, yes. beyond the political platform, uh, beyond the uh, uh, individual differences, we have different groups making up. We have uh, Odua. We have uh, the Afeni Ferry. Ferry. Koya. Yeah. We have uh, Afeni Ferry. You understand? They're all coming together yes. because what? They are Yorubas. So over there too, I want to believe that the, the responsibility lies on the governors bringing about this project. Okay. You understand? To make sure there's a synergy. You know, even talking about Amotekun, we, there was um, the, the, the argument of who is going to lead is it the OPC? Is it, I mean, that's where the governors come in. The governors is a, a, a governor of everybody, not of um, Arewa, Consultative, uh, Consultative uh, Forum. Yes, yeah. or, you know, mm. the same thing, the governors in the East, I mean, in the West, we have PDP governor, we have a APC governor, they are governor to everybody. So the essence of leadership is, um, really your ability to synergize every variable. Yeah. But, but this, this concern, is it, don't you think it's a valid concern? If, if part of those group were those in 2017 that gave um, a sect of the country, a section of the country, um, a three months ultimatum to vacate their, their state, you don't think it's a valid concern? It's a valid concern, same group are coming yes. together now to make a, a, form a larger part of a security Th outfit. That's, we, yeah. We're still saying the same thing. It's a form of concern. Yeah. Uh, in the past, we've had uh, people give ultimatum from every part of the country uh, that um, 
it could be an ultimatum to the government it could be an ultimatum to individuals uh it's a concern yeah but the essence of those ultimatums are actually uh based on this group's concerns so as the leader that leads all of them as the leader that represents all of them that should protect everybody's interest these are things i mean you i mean Shige, Kafasa, i don't think it's just something two people decided and sat down there will be negotiations there will be discrepancies laid on the table yes. there will be um i mean it's it's beyond uh, the political sphere to it i mean uh, i want to believe not all the northern groups have the same ideology okay so it's about synchronizing all, all right. this well, let's put on ideology. regionalism of these security outfits um there, there are definitely pros and cons to the regionalism oh. of the security outfits can, can we put on some of them for a moment um because what we're seeing with journalism when it comes to security what are the pros what are the cons uh talking about um let me start with the cons okay politicians can be very dubious at times uh, um, some of them, of course, not all of them. Uh, this outfits can be hijacked. Okay. And um, that's where the constitution comes in. Uh, that's where um, the federal houses that comprises of um, all the states representatives comes in. Mm. Uh, I want to believe, like, <clears throat> my, my grievances with Amotekun then was, uh, Amotekun is a very good idea. But has it gone through all the necessary constitutional procedures? And I'm glad when those guys were going to come up with um, Shige Kafasa, they're not launching yet. Yes. They would only launch after it had gone through all it the necessary, necessary yeah, due diligence. So, yeah. due diligence. So, I want to believe that if, in truth, due diligence is observed, it's for the betterment of the country. Okay. I won't. I mean, I I I envisage a situation. We have Easterners in Lagos that are already Yorubas. I mean, except they tell you they are Easterners, you you don't know. You, you understand what I'm saying? They 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 believe they have a great stake, and then we have um, Southerners in the north that are also probably having that kind of belief. So where the balance comes in is um, even in recruiting for this um, outfits, what's the recruitment style? Mm -hmm. What's the requisite, uh, prerequisite? I mean, if, um, uh, because I'm very used to the North, I've lived all my life in the North, though I'm a Southerner, if uh, at the end of the day, I can be recruited into Shige Kafasa because the Ausa guy, guy there sees me as his brother, you understand what I'm saying? Then I would say it's balanced. Okay. I, th I think beyond the recruitment process, what it's going to entail, I think um, the major concern is their MO, you know, the regulation of their mode of, of operation. operation yeah. you know, what scope is their, their operation going to entail? Where does the, where, where's the boundary? Where does it stop? Uh, because lately there's been, there's been a call for community policing and state policing. And now I'm just wondering with the emergence of all these um, um, security outfits, doesn't that defeat the purpose of um, community and state policy? Um, I think what the federal government should do is this. This is community policing, policy. as it were. I mean, these are the people that knows the territories. It's just a matter of um, synergizing with the federal police. Okay. I mean, okay, a situation happens, that's where constitution comes in. We know that the security of the state, I mean of the country, is a basic responsibility of the Nigerian police. So Amotekun apprehends a supposed criminal. Amotekun should not have um, the wherewithal to condemn or judge that criminal. Amotekun is only doing um, more like um, a policing duty to apprehend the criminals. Invariably, at the end, what should happen is such criminals should be handed over to the police. Over to the police. You understand what yes. I'm saying? Once that is done, 
But where the, where the discrepancies normally comes in is um, we've had of a um, situation where criminals are apprehended, handed over to the police at the end of the day. Before you know it, one thing happens behind the doors, and then the criminal is released. Um, I mean, all this. Uh, regional outfits because now they are a constitutional body because now they you know they spy in numbers mm. unlike before that individuals are the ones shouting that this police had done this i believe it will be easier i mean it's a check and balance thing on yes. from from both angles the, it will be easier for uh a motel kun or shige kafasa to cry out that oh we apprehended this criminal and uh, the police had, you know, then... I, I think they don't, I think they, they're not within the confines to prosecute. They can make arrests, and, yeah, but they can't, they can't arrest and prosecute at the same time. They can't because arrest if and not, prosecute. We're going to have a case of jungle justice exactly. where they apprehend... They, uh, that's exactly yeah. what I'm saying. Yes. You know, they say power corrupts absolute absolutely. power. Corrupts, corrupts absolutely, absolutely. Yes. The moment there's, um, there's an apprehension, it's handed over to the police. Yes. But I want to believe that there should be the monitoring executing and the uh, policing segment yes. of all these outfits we're yeah. talking about. So when you apprehend a criminal and you hand over to the police, there must be a segment of that outfit that is also monitoring that yeah. justice yes. is served. That is where the balance comes in. Interesting. All right. Um, okay. Now, a cross section of social and political commentators have, have expressed concerns and that the emergence of these regional security outfits spells anarchy to the security architecture of Nigeria as a federal republic. Do you want to agree with that? Um, anyway, there's. Um, I would always respect people's, people's opinion. opinion. Yeah. Uh, but then my opinion will be that um, this, if well sought out, yes. if well thought out, should not bring about anarchy. The fact remains the same process you put in place to bring about process can also be put in place to bring about chaos. It's just about how the process is being managed. managed yes. That's I think that settles it. Political analyst Obide Yolayawadu, thank you very much for your contribution. Thank you very and much. And thank you for staying with us. Up next, the reason for the clash of two religious associations is up next for discussion. Stay with us.